Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrex. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode, where last night I decided I was going to go ahead and try to build a test vehicle using the new hover AI, trying to get a small airship together, and ultimately just build a basic skeleton of one. Then I had some whiskey, things got really weird... And now we have an airship. So today, we're going to be finishing off the airship today, and we're going to be testing it out versus a few of the Deepwater Guard. Hopefully, this thing is going to perform decently. Now, upon first glance, two things come to mind. And remember, this thing wasn't originally going to be even used as a video. In fact, I started it two days ago, when I was just messing around with the AI over here, and then overnight, I sort of extended the entire thing, built a little bit more, built a little walkway, some internal areas, messed around with with mimics, tested different movement types, and this thing came about. Now, the point I was trying to make just then before I rambled on is that this thing looks like two things to me. First of all, like it should have a rail gun down the center or some kind of main weapon, and secondly, like it should be some kind of aircraft carrier. But here's the thing. First of all, it's actually a lot smaller than it looks. Currently, it's only 9,500 volume. It's actually quite small. It just looks huge because, well, your player is tiny. And this thing has loads of air gaps as well, so it looks bigger than it is because it is pretty stretched out. Secondly, it doesn't really have the hull space for a decent weapon at the moment. It has ammo and it has some missiles, including a small hidden section underneath here, which clearly isn't finished yet, which will open up if there's an enemy in sight. So let's quickly just pop down a marauder. And we have two large missiles, which will drop and go towards the target if there is no enemy they will close back up again. And I kind of want another one of those over at the front. It also has a few medium missiles as well. So, let's get started talking about what we're going to do differently. And I'll try to explain how I built this thing a little bit more later on. This has been an abomination of a build, I've got to be honest, because I kept on testing out one thing after another, after another, and it's kind of a mesh of different styles, and I have no idea what to call this thing other than an abomination. But it's my abomination. Oh, now before I forget, thank you so much for the comments in the previous video. I have now changed the water transparency so you can see the very high points of the ocean, but not the very bottom of it. And if there's any ships still floating, you will be able to see their underside as well as the top, so it's nice and easy to tell what's going on and just figure out from there. Now, onto the ship itself once again. So then, the plan for this airship is quite simple. It's going to be a replacement for the missile cruiser I lost when I swapped over computers. Except, it's not going to be quite as heavy in terms of firepower, but hopefully, because it's in the air and because it has some weird tendencies with how I've set up the AI, it should be able to dodge a lot of cram cannons and a lot of the early game threats. I really think something like this, though, is going to utterly crumble against lasers and a lot of the later factions, but I think it's going to do okay versus the Deepwater guard versus the onyx watch maybe versus the lightning hoods even though i just said about the lasers but that will be a bit of a stretch as i fall off so with that right now the entire premise of this craft is it has an insane amount of redundancy at least for one of my craft normally i am guilty of just having one engine one section with ammo one section of pretty much everything but instead this time we have four steam boilers two over here one inside there one inside there then we have one in this chunk of metal here one over here and then we have four sections of batteries which are currently the actual engine power so to take away the engine power of this thing is actually very very difficult the ammo is also kind of everywhere one stupid section i've got here because it's adorable is just ammo on show because i think it looks nice but then there's the major ammo store in the center here behind the fan quite a bit behind the fan and then there's also ammo hidden away over here. Oh, and at the tip as well. Again, I've kind of scattered it all. The idea is I want this thing to be in the air as much as possible until it is on very, very, very low health. I don't want it to fall before it dies. I want it to be destroyed before it starts to fall. That's at least the idea. As you can see, some of the fans aren't actually spinning all the time because these are roll, these are roll, these are pushing up, these are pushing up, this is a pitch, pitch, pitch hybrid. Then we have pitch at the back. We have loads of thrusters everywhere. We have a hidden uh, deadly blade in the center there. There's lots of redundancy. Now, the point of that whole ramble, and it really was a ramble, is that what I'm going to be doing is capitalizing on the whole concept of redundancy, and underneath here, we're going to be adding one more level. This level will include one more set of missiles, and perhaps some more ammo, perhaps some more thrusters, just loads of other little things, which we can scatter away from all of the others, because this thing 
will die fairly quickly if it doesn't have backups. Let's just say that. Now, thankfully, although it may not look like it, if you lose all of these lovely propellers, the thing still flies. These are actually just additional flight supports. And I really like them. They're really exposed. I know I could armor this up so much better, perhaps even just pulling it closer to the main body. But I like it as it is. And at the end of the day, I don't try to build the best because I'm not. I try to build dumb because I am. So with that, I'm going to quickly attach a new level here, and then, hopefully, it'll look okay. Today, lots of combat tests, hopefully. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this. Then we have, of course, the gaps here for the jets. The question is, do I want to add some ladders so this can be accessed as well? Doing that's going to be really difficult. Currently, most of this can be accessed by the player. I have currently blocked off the very center of this because I just needed more armor space. But everything else, there's doors, there's easy accessibility, which I kind of like. I don't think I can do that here, though. I also kind of want to add some of the medium simple weapons just because tiny aircraft are probably going to be a nightmare for this thing. Not sure, but yeah, I think something like this. And then the question is... How far down is it going to go? So this one is one, two, three, four, and then the lip at the top. Would that be okay? I think it would, yeah. I was a bit concerned that having this the same size as that would be a bit weird, but I think that'll be okay. To be fair, the whole thing's weird. Now, the issue is, it's currently only being held together by these wooden poles. So what I need to do is perhaps I could make some fake stairs and then attach some metal to them so the metal is actually the reinforcement. The stairs are there to add a fake bit of purpose, functionality, shininess. What might have been really cool is trying to make these levels look like other ships. So it's an amalgamation of various ships just kind of glued together. But I think it's a bit light for that now. So how does that look? I quite like it, but I also see people disliking that, but I've got a weird sense of taste. Yeah, something like that. Then we have the missiles a bit further back, maybe about here. Probably still going to just go with medium missiles, since I find those the most effective. Currently, these missiles are set to be a way shorter range than the cruise missiles, but have an extra explosive head. In fact, I think they have two extra explosive warheads. So they should be hitting a lot more than the old ones, just nowhere near the range. Okay, I'm considering perhaps tapering this off. That way we don't have the lip continuing. That saves a bit of volume, since it's not really serving too much of a purpose. Then the wood section here can kind of taper off as well into metal. So this is more just there as a non-player accessible area if we do add the full stairs. Then we have chains and everything holding it to the main section over here if we continue it a little bit further. I think we'll go with that. Apparently I was also wrong with the volume earlier. For some reason I thought it was like 9,000 something. Nope, it was already 10,000 and now it's 10,500. So realistically, I don't want to go over 15,000. So it's still not a particularly huge build, but it has got to a decent size now. Okay, so same again. We have the missiles quite high up, so we have all the armor on the underside. And now this section as well is acting as armor for the next one up. We could add, like, support struts as well on the outside, especially with this one holding the one underneath. Be an easy way to blend in an extra bit of armor. In fact, we could have that going all the way from the top section down. That would be interesting. I'll decide after I've added the internals here. So two things come to mind. First of all, we could scatter these gantries so that we can have metal beams or even heavy armor beams in between them. This would really help out defending the squishy core, which of course is the connectors and everything else. But also, I'm somewhat tempted to just not have the medium missiles and instead have a copy of what's over here. So the opening missile door and then a couple of large missiles now the large missiles at the back are actually high explosive anti-tank missiles they're heat missiles which do loads of internal damage and it would be nice to have more of them over here but then where do i put the medium missiles i do want a second section of these because these are more reliable and i could have these further back so these go here instead 
Then we have all of that at the front. Maybe. It would be nice to start off the fight and shoot four of the large missiles. So I was considering adding some large missiles to the back here, just because more missiles is more fun. But honestly, I don't think it's worth the cost. At the moment, this is 180,000 materials and 12,000 volumes. So it's very expensive and not quite that big for the cost. But the large missiles are just really, really expensive. So I'm going to ignore that. I've added some ammo to the front already. So I've got an extra ammo storage. I've added the missile system, armored all that up. And now, over here, I'm either going to add some more ammo or perhaps even another engine or boiler. After that, I'm just going to try and make all this look a little bit better and then we'll do some combat tests. Or actually, we could do the combat tests as soon as the ammo is added and I've just connected this properly to the next layer. Originally, I've got to be honest, I was a bit worried about the new layer, but I actually really like it. Now, here is something I really need to use more of, the Mimic. You can make some insane stuff. That's actually the small chains. Just with some serious scaling. A bit too much, in fact. But uh, maybe one of these in the middle would look kind of cool. Just a bit smaller, because again, that's just kind of insane. In fact, I have used them a little bit on this craft, as I mentioned briefly earlier, I think. Rather than using mainframes over here, we have Mimics. They're far, far, far cheaper, since mainframes are now 800 materials each, and the Mimics are only two, which is fairly nice. Also, you can have them all at different angles and stuff, so really, really need to use those more in the future when I have a bit more time to design all the things. At the moment, I'm currently looking after my fiancé, who's currently very ill, and I've been back to England again because my mom's also still suffering from her hurt wrist. I'm kind of all over the place and being care at the moment, which is weird. Okay, time for some combat testing. Right now I've added some metal armor here so we don't lose the bottom section too easily. I've re-armored some of the sections here and here. Just very boring stuff. And now I feel like I just want to see things fight things. So, first of all, I'm going to turn off my give materials. I already have my repair off. I'm going to jump off anyway. There we are. And so, we are pretty much ready to go. So it only has the materials it currently has on the ship. If it loses them, it simply can't keep on adding more ammo to its stockpile through the ammunition processors. So first, I really want to fight some of the larger airships we're going to come into contact with. So the largest is the Conga, and so that's where we go. After that, of course, we'll test out versus the Crossbones, as usual. But please bear in mind, currently we are in the sandbox mode, and I have the auto detection on, which means the custom settings of detection systems from the enemy aren't actually active. They're all using the base auto detect, which can actually be worse in some circumstances. Because although it's perfect, and they always know where you are, the settings of where they're going to fire their weapon and how they're dealing with your movements are all defaulted which can be worse versus things like an airship, which is constantly moving around. Okay, the conga is way above us. Cram cannons, which is definitely good for us. Oh, advanced cannon and a miss. And the conga was going down to a different level, it seems. Oh, large missile there to its butt. And we have hollowed the thing out. Oh, it seems like we have decided that the battle is over. We're going back to our cruising altitude, which is much lower. Because yet the enemy is AI dead. Okay, I'm going to turn off the weapons and see if the enemy would have just stayed at that level. It's got quite the angry face on it, hasn't it? Okay, there we go. Yeah, so it would have stayed here eventually. Currently, I am using the automatic AI for circling the opponents. I will probably be customizing that as well in the future. But for now, it is doing exactly what I wanted to do. So there's the initial strike, which does most of the damage. Large missile coming in, and once again, pretty much ended. So now, let's fight versus the crossbones, as per usual. 
Once again, our repair tentacles are now off, and I'm no longer giving materials, going to jump off again. Sadly, all that got reset because the game did just crash when I went to test out if it would land at a certain height. That's why all that was back on. So now we fight the crossbones. Well, we are very close to the target. That's not particularly good for us. Okay, I'm keen to see how much damage these do if they do indeed hit, which I think they're going to. Just about clipping the bottom there. Layered armor doing very well, in fact. Okay, next lot of missiles. Well, that pretty useless wooden keel, not keel, bridge just went down. The keel is underneath. I am aware of this. Now, I do want to test how well we can take damage as well. And again, with the detection systems as they are, and the fact these are cram shells, there is a good chance a lot of these are going to miss. So we are at a huge advantage here. Need to test out versus a serious amount of enemies, really. Though I am already falling asleep. Which isn't good. I still need to finish that bottom section. It's weird starting a video with the craft so finished. Okay, we are now only using the ammo on board and what the ammunition processors can create. That's a decent fire rate at that stage. Definitely doing better than the old missile cruiser was doing. And even though these are shorter range, more deadly missiles than what the cruiser had, they're still not doing that much, though. Especially for their cost. But I think it's safe to say here, unless they somehow get the most perfect shot, and even then, the airship has won this. So let's fight some other enemies. Okay, what I'm currently doing is just testing out how well this thing can actually take a hit. That was a great hit, but because it hit all this stuff kind of overhanging on the side, the explosion was vastly nullified. Currently I just have the weapons turned off, essentially. Just want to see what damage does to certain areas. Okay, a few direct hits there. Still not through the lines of armor, which is lovely. So two direct hits, and that section is still very much going. Although, oh, it did destroy our main forward propulsion. So now we are far, far slower. So they have one side going, and I do have a tiny little section in the front. Why are you firing suddenly? Okay, don't quite know what caused that. Please don't hit the front cannons. Of course you did. What caused that? Okay, another direct hit, but the ammo storage inside is still safe, along with a lot of the other stuff. I am more than happy with that. Even if our forward propulsion is all but removed. Okay. One of the two ammo stores is gone. The other is basically exposed. That did take three full hits on the side. If I do lose that back section, we are going down, though. Even with all the backups, if I lose that completely. Okay, still up. Still got ammo, still got the ability to make energy, still got engines all around. Okay, hitting a different area, that is very dangerous for us, and we did just lose one more of our small ammo storages, as you can probably tell by the hole right there. But I think we're still capable of firing back. Yep. Those still connected. Those still connected. I'm amazed we can actually stay airborne with all that gone. 
Note to self, add some forward propulsion somewhere else, and you can still move. You can still turn, since you have turning thrusters there. Oh, that was a nasty hit there. The crossbones gets really close to its target, doesn't it? Okay, that's a lot of our pitch stuff gone. In fact, yeah, lots of our pitch stuff has been removed. Oh, the airship is now wobbling. It's lost all of the pitch from the back and most of the pitch from the front. It's just about going to be able to keep upright. Only one side of our missiles are still working, and not even all of them, but still technically could fire back. Oh, we are finally going down, I think. Yep, that may have sunk it. Oh, it's still trying so hard. Yep, it was pitch in the end. At 47% health, it finally sunk. Yeah, it can't fire anymore. It's gone. Perhaps adding some more pitch to the front might be nice. But honestly, at, at that level of damage, it's pretty much gone anyway. The AI is still going there, so that's good. Okay, that actually did better than I expected, so happy with that. And with that, let's finally finish off the bottom and then have one final test versus something like perhaps... The Onyx Watch Thruster Craft, or perhaps even something like the Bulwark, which has much, much better armor than the Crossbones. I think. The Crossbones is oddly sturdy. The finished product, at least for now. So, I've added some more forward propulsion. I've added a large jet down there. Loads of little jets hidden here and there to make sure if one section is damaged, it should still be able to just about get out of there. I've added some more roll thrusters just to add a bit of texture to the side of the craft. And I've added some more extra armor here and there, so it's a little bit sturdier than it was previously. I've also added some metal poles over here so this thing is holding on a little bit better to the main body and I have replaced some of the wood with metal as well so the bottom section is now far less detached from the rest of the craft also some more mimics for some more chains I still think a bit could be done with the bottom section to make it look a bit better but as it stands I'm fairly happy with this, and I definitely will be retrofitting it a lot in the future to make it either look better or act better. I do want a railgun version of this, or a laser version of this, which simply stays way further away from combat. But for now, I just wanted a missile craft. So, our final test, let's fight against the Bulwark. If we do win, I'm only just about going to count it as a victory because of the detection systems. The Bulwark could very well be far better in the campaign, when it's currently being shown. This is more just to see if the missiles have enough damage. Okay, there I go. And so begins the final battle versus the glorious Bulwark. Now, one thing to say is this rising up from its cruising altitude will still take place in all the battles it spawns in because that's the altitude I will be spawning it in. So it is fair to have this little bit of extra dodge at the very, very start because that's just how it's going to enter battles. Not that it mattered anyway as I just took all those cram cannons to the face. Large cram cannon there, sorry, large missile doing some serious work, doing some damage there to this turret. Sadly, though, the heavy armor absorbed most of it. Lost 8% health from those first few cram cannon shots. If these missiles could just hit the turrets, that would be lovely. Okay, one of these smaller turrets got completely taken out, and there goes one more of the barrels. When their barrels are mostly removed, they're almost completely useless. The chance of hitting is so low. Okay, now only going off what the ammo processors are creating, and what the ammo barrels are naturally regenerating. Quite a bit of damage there on the side, but not too much in terms of severe damage. Oh, 
Oof. Well, once again, though, that was mostly just armor, thankfully. We have lost 13%, and they have lost 20 Okay, the center is gone, but don't really care about that. Please continue to hit the turrets. Almost. Okay, perfect. Now this turret here is almost completely useless since it's not really going to be able to hit us. I think we are going to be victorious here. Love the bouncing missiles from the explosion of the previous missiles. Wish I could aim them at one spot, but sadly since aim point selection no longer can target specific things, only random blocks, and I'm not using the laser anyway, that's not really working out. The laser guidance, that is. Which I may end up using in the end, because it will at least concentrate all the missiles to one section, which means they could potentially go straight through a target and deal damage all the way through. But I do like the randomness. Adds a bit of chaos. Hit this thing! Oh! Close! A for effort. Maybe a B plus. Ooh, I direct it there from the bulwark. Seems like the armor on the outside just about made it through pretty much everywhere. One of these is not like the others. And that's that. The bulwark is now two damage. The victor is the Abomination at 77% health. So what did I learn from that fight? We can definitely take a beating, but also we really have quite low DPS. Um, our damage is fine in bursts, but it's just not good enough to deal with heavy armor or even layered armor, honestly. I think maybe some more high explosive anti-tank stuff might be better, even with the medium missiles, but against the Deepwater Guard, it really does seem like just regular explosive, except for things like the crossbones. A final test, the trebuchet, since I mentioned this earlier. It does have a decent munition defense, but it seems like very much overwhelmed. Okay. That's a lot of damage being dealt. You see, this is why I'm a little bit hesitant about using missiles too much. It's just the guarantee of hitting. And when you use a swarm like this, any weak spots, like huge turrets, can be quite quickly removed. Oh, and there it goes. Definitely has enough burst damage. And so with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continue in the future. Now sadly today I did not have as much time as I usually do to record the video. I've been working on this craft for the last two or three days, just here and there, and honestly I wish I could have showcased a lot more, but right now I am trying to do so many other things in real life, my time is really, really scarce. But hopefully, this has still been an enjoyable video. I will be returning to this airship quite a bit, I imagine, in the future, and I really do hope you've all enjoyed it as well. So, any name suggestions and such, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Do take care.
And next time, maybe I can spend a bit more time actually recording. Though I did have loads of fun today again. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>